So, uh, welcome everybody to our first outside uh, meeting here at Brookhurst. Uh, the next time or two, I'm probably going to leave my sunglasses on, so I'm going to turn them up and down, up and down, and up and up and on. That way I don't get confused. Um, um, the next week, we're scheduled to be either out here or over in this little kid room. I took a few of you over and showed you the little kid room. I think we're going to end up out here because yeah. the little kid room, uh, and next week, I think it's supposed to be like four degrees cooler, which will make it pretty nice too. So we can uh, we can figure out how to make this patio work. I like it. I like it a lot. And uh, hey, good times. Today we have a message uh, that's going to be a little bit. It's going to be a familiar passage, but it's going to be different. And also like our television. Uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens with that. We've got to figure out how to make things work out here in the sun. With some big gigantic televisions or something. I don't know. Let's see what happens. What? Yeah, a little tired. All those things that I that I did a week or two ago that was like, see, this stuff would be perfect for this room. I don't know. If they, I don't know if they work anymore. <laughs> so hey, uh, we're going to be looking at a chapter out of a, a um, passage out of the book of Luke, Luke chapter twenty-one. So uh, when our technology TV goes away, this is a good time to try to be able to flip around a paper Bible. See what happens. I was uh, looking through. Uh, I was uh, fixing up a PowerPoint earlier out here, sitting in the sun. I thought, man, this is rough. Paper's a good thing. Paper Bibles are all right. Luke chapter 21 records a, uh, a story of a lady who gave everything she had. And here we are moving into this neighborhood, moving into the Brookhurst Community Center. And I'm thinking about giving everything I have and what that looks like. Interesting, I feel like as I'm looking at this message, I felt that the whole time, but I just went and copied it down for a moment so I knew I'd get it all my points in a row. And I was just like, man, I have been living this message. I've been living this message for a week or two or three now. Wow, given everything I have. And in, in Luke chapter 21, we have the story of a widow who gives everything she has. The only other place it's recorded is in the book of Mark. And Mark does almost word for word the same exact thing with some small differences. You can check that out on your own at some time. Let me read for you Luke chapter 21, starting in verse 1. As Jesus looked up, he saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple to treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two very small copper coins. Truly I tell you, he said, this poor woman has put in more than all of the others. These people gave their gifts out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. It's a very similar story when you read it over in, 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 the, in the book of Mark. It's, it almost looks like they copied one from each other. There's a small difference in that it says she's given... Uh, all she has to live on, and the other one said she's given almost all she has to live on. It was pretty, it was pretty right there. But you get the idea that there's people coming in to drop off gifts to the church. They're coming in, they're dropping off money. They're putting their money in the bucket, and these people are coming in with big gifts. Like here's here's a hundred bucks, boom. Here's five hundred bucks, boom. But they're given out of their wealth. And then walks up this lady, this this. Widow. We don't know if she's old. We don't know if she's like 50, 60, 70. We don't know that. She could be a 30-year-old widow. Up walks this widow. And she's got these two coins. And she puts them in the box. Here's something interesting about where she's putting it. Because there's a couple of different spots back in this particular passage. She's in the temple. That's the first thing we note. She's in the temple. And in the temple, there's several different boxes to put money in. She could put money in the tithe offering or the temple offering, the, the tax. Just to go into this big, beautiful building, it's going to cost you a little bit more. It's a cover charge, right? So here they go into this cover charge, this big, beautiful building. And there's the temple tax that you have to pay. After you've paid your temple tax, that's the money that it costs to keep the building going, to keep everything happening. After they paid the temple tax, there are other boxes. These are the boxes you can put your gifts into. So if you have a gift that you want to give above and beyond your temple tax, you would drop it in one of these boxes. 
So everybody that's in the temple has already paid their temple tax. They've already given money just for the sake of being there. Now you go to the gift box, and that's where people are having a show, right? Look, I paid my money to get in. I'm gonna also give an extra $300. Boom, I'm a baller, right? And they're just doing this. And this lady is looking at this box, and you know, this part isn't recorded for us, but I gotta feel like she's looking at it, and there's something stirring in here, in her that's like, give, give the gift to the temple. And she walks up and she's got, I don't know how you can calculate this out, but I was reading some commentaries and somebody said it was worth about seven cents, seven pennies. She walks up and drops her last seven pennies into the, into the box. All she had to live on. The, the risk of being like a, a little too modern or picking on people that might be a little too close. I was thinking like, um, you know, one time I got to stay at a hotel over here and uh, people come through and they clean your rooms afterwards, right? Look, these aren't the richest people you've ever seen, right? These are people that work long, hard hours to make sure that I have a clean room when I check into a hotel. And I'm thinking about how good I would feel being at a church and giving whatever it was that I had to give. I'm giving my, my tithe money. Okay, now I'm going to go above and beyond. I'm going to give an extra, like, $100. Boom! And uh, the truth is I still have, like, $1,000 in the bank. But I'm making a big production out of giving my thousand bucks. And then this little maid from the hotel down the, from the Motel 6 down the street, she rolls up, she's got, she's got $17 for the rest of the weekend. <laughs> Until payday, she's got $17 and she's like, I'm gonna put in, I'm gonna put in $14. And she just walks up and drops her 14. Maybe she keeps her three. Maybe she gives 16. She just kept one. Maybe she gave all 17. We don't get the whole records like that. But wow, that's this kind of story. And in that story, Jesus is sitting there watching. Jesus is sitting there watching people come up and make a show. And then he notices this lady who comes up and gives everything. And that's when he turns around to his disciples and says, well, let me tell you something. I've seen a lot of people doing some crazy shows out here, but nothing like what this lady just did. This lady just gave, completely just gave. She has given more than everybody else has given. I tried to find out if it's everybody combined or it's just every individual. I couldn't figure that out from the way that Greek uh, goes, but she has given more than everybody else. The disciples got to look at this and go, well, more. Actually, she gave like a handful of change. Jesus saying that's all she had and she gave it. Very often, this is a passage that gets used and the next thing is like, so now we're going to take an offering, right? <laughs> don't, you know, don't worry about it. Don't worry. No stress on this. I just want to say, I want to live a life like this lady. I think sticking all she has in the gift box. <laughs> sticking all she has in the gift box. Talks about her heart. It shows us, it reveals her heart condition to us. And I want to have a heart like that. I want to have a heart like that right now. I want to have a heart like that for the rest of my life. So I jotted down some notes. And it's going to be a little bit weird because I, I don't have a TV to show it to you. But um, the first thing that I wrote... I wrote this thing about being holy near. You know, you give, you give like that because you know that God is faithful. And you know that you can trust God no matter what. And you know that, that God is love and he loves you and will take care of you. It's this heart condition that's showing uh, so much. I put, my, I put my dependence completely on God. What she may not have known is that God was sitting right there in the temple looking at her. Like God is that close. I thought about that for some friends that I know. Friends that I know that would be able to say, yeah, I know that God is love. 
Yeah, I know that God is dependable. I know that God is faithful. If God exists in the first place, I know that he would be a good, loving God. But I think people can get tripped up. They can, get, they can stop one, one step short of, I think God is near. Like, I think God is in the room with me. Like, he is that close. I, I put on my PowerPoint slide that this would be a holy near double dare. Oh, oh, and then I didn't like dare, so I put sphere. Holy near double sphere underwear. I didn't put the underwear part on. I was just about to get through this one. Because here we've got something going on. This is a lady that's saying, God, I love you so much. I'm going to give I want to give everything. Not just I want to give everything. She does it. She's made this trip as a widow. She doesn't have any extra income. She doesn't have anybody coming along and says, here, I'll help you out. This lady makes this trip as a widow and says, I am going to put my all into the basket, into the God basket. And here's the way the sphere works. I love you God so much. I'll give you, I'll give you everything. God's sitting on the other side of the room like, did you guys see that? Did you see that? And here comes the love of God right back onto this lady. And this lady just loves God even more. They're like, you try to outgive God. I mean, a lot of us have heard that. Just try to outgive God. Okay, let me just say, I'm not talking about your money. Like, try to outgive. Try to give yourself to God more than God will give himself to you. God will give himself. Try to love God more than God will love you. Try to be more faithful to God than God will be faithful to you. And you'll find yourself in this crazy circle of God one up in you all the time. Ha ha, let's try it again. Like I love you even more. Let's try it again. Try to love me more. Now ha, I love you more back. God is in the business of, of loving us like that, of being faithful to us like that. When I say that he is holy near, I spelled it with the H-W-O-L-L-Y, like whole. The entirety of God is here for us. And the entirety of us is, is heading straight back to God. That's the kind of life I want to live and that makes point number two, it makes so much sense. Point number two here, it's not a show. And I think Jesus is sitting there watching these folks give just so he can make a point to his disciples. You know, if you step back from chapter 21 and you read the whole thing in context, here's what you're going to find. In chapter 20, there's, uh, there's the religious leaders in their gigantic, beautiful robes. And Jesus says, don't get carried away because these guys show up in their big fancy robes. You know, the kingdom is not about big and fancy. Now we got chapter 21, big and fancy, um, handing out all the, I gave a big gift. Uh, oh, then we've got the story of the widow who doesn't have much. She's not the show. The very next story that we read is the disciples walking around the temple being like, wow. This temple is amazing. Can you imagine these boulders? Just these boulders are amazing. And Jesus tells them again, like, you're not getting it. Hey, the temple's going to go away, right? The temple's going to be taken down. It's going to be gone. Not one of these stones is going to be left standing on top of each other. Don't get your eyes stuck on things. Things. And then the whole rest of chapter 21 is called the... Uh, apocryphal or eschatological writings where uh, Jesus goes in and says, you know, the sun's going to be blotted out. The water's going to be blood. Like, it's, it's just like the end of the world is coming. As I look at this whole story of the widow and her change, Jesus is pointing out to us that the kingdom of heaven will not be a show. In fact, if we're doing this whole love sphere where I love you and you love me back, the whole show part goes missing. It goes absent. You got nobody to... Can you imagine if I start to tell Brady, Brady, I love God so much. And Brady just say back to me, man, I love God so much. And God be like, I love both you guys like crazy. And, just, and Solomon comes in, no, I love God so much. We all just keep loving God, loving God. There's no show to be had. 
there's no show. It's all about your heart. It's all about your insides. It's all about your heart. Something that got me kind of uh, interested in this in this particular story. There's no report that comes out of this widow. There's no report. You guys can go back and read the story if you want to. Uh, I, got, I got a question for you. Does the widow even know that Jesus made this statement? The widow just came up. She dropped off her seven cents. And she walks out of the story. Jesus turns to his disciples and says, Faith like that. She's given so much. I haven't seen anybody like that. But the widow walks out of the story. We get no report that she knows like, oh, hey, God is proud of me. She doesn't know that. She just left the story. She just left. Um, we have no report that things get better for her. She didn't drop off her last seven cents and then go home and open the mailbox and have a check for 500 bucks. We get no report that anything changed. We don't know if she goes home and she finds a, 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 a new husband. We don't know any of that. As far as we can tell from the story, she goes on being a poor widow. There's no report of any change. But in her steadfast faithfulness, she's caught the attention of Jesus. Will she know it right then? I don't know. Did she know it at some point the rest of her life? I don't know. But she's caught the attention of Jesus, and it's made it into our Bible. It caught the attention of the disciples. It caught the attention of Mark. It caught the attention of Luke. And that It caught their attention, that it caught Jesus' attention, and they put it here in Scripture so that here, 2,000-some-odd years later, we'd be sitting at this little park in Brookhurst talking about it. This lady caught the attention of Jesus, and it caught their attention, the attention of Jesus, caught their attention because she gave without calculation. She didn't wonder, what am I going to get back out of this? She gave without thought of her comfort, like, it is my last seven cents. I wonder if I could really make something happen here with this. What should I do with my last seven cents? She didn't think any of that. She saw that there was an opportunity to give to God. And she gave everything to God. We're going to start a church in Anaheim. And I tell you, I've calculated a bunch of it, right? I've sat down. I thought, how are we going to pay this bill? And how are we going to pay that bill? Uh, or I've calculated, like, man, it used to be rough to wake up and get over to the wall of sound at 10. And now I'm waking up and getting over to Brookhurst at 9. Wow, this is it's a lot of work. Do I want to calculate? Do I want to calculate my my comfort? Do I want to? I'll, I'll be there. I'll show up at eight thirty if I think that I can. If God will think better of me, I don't want to be like that. I don't even think you can. I think God just loves you, right? God just loves you like crazy. And when you show up and do your stuff, He's just thrilled that you're showing up and doing your stuff because it's a heart issue. It's not a show issue. I think the reason that the story of the widow and her change shows up right here in the middle of these discussions of what does poor and rich look like in the end times. Notice this is, here's the new kingdom. Poor and rich are going to look different from here until the world goes away. Poor and rich are going to look different. It's no longer the rich people who have the power. It's no longer the poor people who struggle and struggle. I tell you, I'll judge you on your heart. I'm looking at your heart and seeing how much you're willing, how, how far you're willing. Are you willing to be wholly committed? Are you willing to get wholly near to me? Everything about you, bring it wholly near to me. Because God is saying, I'm willing to get wholly near to you. I hope that freaks you out just a little bit. That God wants to be wholly near you. Everything about him wants to be wholly near you. And his desire is that you would be wholly near to him. This isn't a story about money. If we reduce it to like, hey, now be a good tither, I think we've, we've sold it short. Check it out, Rick's positioned in the rest of scripture and it takes on this huge meaning 
God wants to be wholly near you. Between now and the end of the world, store it. As I look back on a year, I'm, I'm a little stunned. It's been a year. And I think about the times we've been meeting in my house and uh, um, the crazy kids. I think the whole first summer of us meeting, I kept on warning you guys, like, oh, and I have these kids, but they're at grandma's house, but they'll be coming back Sunday, and here I am, we just dropped them off. So now it's like, well, I've got these kids, like, for real, you'll meet them Sunday. Uh, the journey from the house uh, over to the the variety of parenting options we've looked at, the, the variety of locations from my house into Wall of Sound and now here into Brookhurst. I'm, I am thrilled with what God is doing. I am thrilled with what God has done. And I'm just so confident that God has surrounded me with the people I need at the time that I needed them. Uh, and that's been, that's been a thrill. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do anything different, even just for those things right there. That God has always had community around me, the community that I needed at the moment. Sometimes uh, people get to hang out and hang with you for a long time, walk with you for a long time, and sometimes uh, life happens and things change a little bit. Uh, you guys probably remember Clinton. Clinton was here for a little while. Yeah, I know, huh? Clinton was here for a little while. Um, and then he followed a girl someplace. Girls, we gotta watch out for girls. Nothing but trouble. Idaho. Idaho or something like that. Yeah, someplace far away. So he moved way, way far away, and, and now they're all like super happy. He was back here just this last weekend, I think, because his sister had some surgery for her cancer. But uh, he did that, he came back, now he just flew back to wherever he is. And I couldn't be more thrilled for him and for Sierra and all that they've got going on. Good for them and their young life. Well, I've had another conversation recently. Uh, and, and Clinton was like, hey, anyways, I'm going with Sierra. I'll see you guys later. Okay, man, have a good one, take it easy. Well, I got a call from Brady, and it wasn't a super easy call. And Brady's like, man, we're, you know, the getting out there and trying to be there, but trying to do our wedding and trying to work our jobs and trying to do the whole bunch of it. And I'm like, Brady, you don't have to, like, convince me out of it. Like, I love you. I love Amanda. I love what you guys have done uh, being here. If you could just do me this one favor. Don't, don't be like, so tell everybody I said peace, right? <laughs> I said, would you do us a favor just coming out and hanging out with us one more time and letting us pray for you guys? And I don't know if you guys are public speakers or want to say something, but if you guys want to come up and, and just say whatever's to everybody, that would be so sweet. We would love it. Um, Solomon's gonna cry. He's getting a tissue right now. Hang on a second. I'm gonna go cut myself. There's tissue. Wow. Oh, I don't know if I've got a little like that. Okay, you got. I'll put this. I'll put this back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.